Welcome back into Kramer Talks Baseball. We're going to throw some shed. And we have to stay local with Kansas City Royals. Of course, I always got to talk about them. So we have a few Royals topics. There's been pitchers that have been cheating, or they've been using stuff to make them cheat, or help them cheat, or even actually make them better. Bill James, the mastermind behind Moneyball, has a new plan for Major League Baseball. He's proposing it. And there's some players that could be dealt at the trade deadline. We're going to get into that right here as it's coming up right next. So Major League Baseball, we have the top prospect system. And with Kansas City Royals, the number 97 prospect in Major League Baseball is Jackson Coar. And Coar made his Major League debut against the Angels. Granted, he got rocked by the Angels. Uh, he did not even finish the first inning. He only got two-thirds of the inning with outs, only two outs. His ERA, I mean, it's it, granted, he only got two outs. It's a 5-4 ERA, 54 54, yeah, it's 54. Four earned runs, two walks in the game against the Angel. But this is a guy that's like not like this at all. Because coming into this, he was the AAA pitcher of the month. And he was the pitcher of the month for the Royals farm system. Because he's he was 5-0 and with a point, yes, point eight five ERA, 41 strikeouts, 10 balls. So we were coming up to this because Jackson Coart, this needs to be called up. Granted, he was called up, but he got rocked. But I think, I think... There's a, there's a method to this madness because Daniel Lynch got called up for the Kansas City Royals. Yeah, he did not do so hot in his few starts that he had. but I And he got sent back down. But I honestly think it's a good thing for a young pitcher such as Kowar to fail at the beginning. And so we can see if his mindset and mentals can recoup. Only because his best pitch that he does throw is his changeup. He granted his changeup is one of the best that was in AAA. And now calling up uh, the his former, not former teammate, his current teammate, Whit Merrifield, even compared it to such as a Michael Waka changeup when he got called up. So his changeup is bread and butter. His changeup was not hitting at all against the Angels, at all. It, because it came to the factor of nerves. The nerves got to him. It was his Major League debut. As, as if He should be nervous because, it's granted, he's on the big stage now. He goes from a... Double A, Triple A, to the alternate camp, to Triple A, and this is just a, a stepping stone that he has to get to the bigs. Then once he got to the bigs, he kind of crumbled under pressure. You can easily tell during the game the changeup was not working. He missed high. He missed in the dirt, like 50, 55 feet in front of the plate, and it just seemed like it wasn't. It we could watch him struggle on the mound and it was quite actually it was it was it was very sad uh, it kind of reminded me back when um, uh, Mike Michael Myers for the St. Louis Cardinals made his major league debut and it was against the Dodgers and they he gave up nine runs in the first inning one was a grand slam and that, I thought that was the worst start for any type of rookie pitcher getting called up but for Royals history this might be the worst rookie call up start for major league base for the, the Kansas City Royals in major league baseball I think this is a good thing because now our expectations are still kind of low for him as a fan. If you didn't even know who Jackson Coar is or don't follow the MLB pipeline, you're thinking, okay, he he, he got rocked. So this We shouldn't start him. But then we start him again because he's going to play again against Oakland. I, it's going to be a different ball game, I feel like. I feel like Jackson got that jitters out of the way, and then this next game, it will actually show his mental mindset if he can get through the mental aspect of playing in Major League Baseball because it is – it's it, seriously – they're under pressure. There's cameras on them. Fans are watching. Granted, I know that they've been on TV. They've had fans before, but this is a different level. This is the the elite of the elite. That's why Major League Baseball is the number one, like, I guess, baseball organization in the entire world. So, granted, you are going to have jitters, and that's what brings you out from the men to the boys. And let's just see if Jackson Coar can go from a boy to a man just in his next start. Granted, it's going to take him a while. There's growing pains. For a rookie, I honestly think that it's okay for all of this because you could seriously just work it out. And that's how the mindset is because Major League Baseball, like every single game, of course it's a war of attrition, but it's a game of failure. And granted, Jackson Coar failed in his first start. So if you go with that mindset, he's going to keep working back onto it to where he's actually going to excel and improve on his next one. So at this point with Jackson Coar, you have nothing to worry about. Don't worry about anything. Granted, Kansas City Royals saw that Daniel Lynch was 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 shelled for his few for his first few starts in Major League Baseball because it was tipping pitches, which I'll get into more on the pitching a little bit later on. With of course we all know the the pitchers are cheating right now, but with Major League Baseball and the Kansas City Royals, 
they have this farm system that has the youth. And we've seen Brady Singer get called up, Chris Bubich get called up, Daniel Lynch get called up, now Jackson Coar, Daniel Lynch back down. Are we going to see Jackson Coar get sent back down? I hope not because that will just ruin that mental mindset even more. But there's also like this gap between – Triple A and Major League Baseball of just talent level, and that the fact that people are raking in Triple A, like the, the home run numbers are still up. They've been up this entire time, but in, up in the Major League Baseball, the pitchers are just striking everybody out except for some rookies that get called up, such as Daniel Lynch and Chris Bubich. Does that have a tie to this pitching substance using like sticky tack or whatever the the spider tack type stuff that they've been saying that p- pitchers are using the clear sticky stuff? Are they not using it in AAA because we've seen that there's an Excel number of home runs, but when we get to the majors, the, the Major League Baseball players are so accustomed to hit, trying to swing and hit for that 97-mile-an-hour sinker, and they just you know, park a, a home run or have a hard hits no matter what, loud outs no matter what, against pitchers in AAA who are not using this stuff called sticky stuff? I mean, that could you could probably assume that to the Jackson Coar and – Daniel Lynch aspect for it, but these two young guys, they're they're the future for the Kansas City Royals, and granted, this is their first season being called up, they made the Major League debut, it's a growing pain, it's, you you want these type of problems, because if they fail now, they'll work it out later, and hopefully they achieve and overcome adversity, and become the stars that they were prominent to be, from when they've been drafted between the rounds of between 1 and I believe 55 between these pitchers, the four pitchers that they drafted in 2018, so it's it's a it's a grind, and it's a, a slow grind, but I think at the end of the tunnel, there's a big, dominant push for these guys that are going to be exceptionally well and good at pitching, and the Kansas City Royals within the next five years should have the best pitching rotation in Major League Baseball because of these young guns. And they even distracted a guy named Asa Lacey, who's in high A right now, who they're expecting to be in the Major League Ball Club within either, of course, not this season, but possibly next season towards a September call-up because of just how the, the, the talent that they have and wealth and youth and the pitching that they do have. And So Jackson, Coar, do not sleep on him. Don't be like, don't be done with him just right now. He's a rookie. He's, this is bound to happen. I mean, granted, he's not a pitcher by any means necessary, but look at Mike Trout. Mike Trout got called up. He got sent back down, started in AAA in the following season. So this thing's happened. These things happen to talented players. They do. So you should never be – don't be concerned. J- Jackson Coar will make it back, but I think he's still – they. the young guys need to fail first in order for him to come back. Just go for an- another – I mean, granted, the, the, the Blue Jays pitcher, he he did good. The the A's, it's just the timing. And the fact that, honestly, I I don't I do not like how Kowar was called up on a road trip game. I think it would be a lot better if he was called up during a home game. So then at least know he's more accustomed and familiar. But he's, he's he got sent out to L.A., Los Angeles, a big market, a huge market out in Anaheim. That... I wouldn't say that was strike one, but I was hoping he did a lot better. But granted, I cannot wait. He's going to pitch out in Oakland his next start. Hopefully, if he does start, but his next, but his start at Kaufman, if he does not get a win there or be dominant between these next three starts, he's going to have. I'm hoping he has two more starts before he gets the inevitable. If he gets sent down, I hope he does get a start at Kaufman because that right there will show the test. That will show the test because all the Kaufman fans will go around him and they'll actually help him out and. Granted, that actually might boost his confidence up, and the nerves will go away, hoping. But Jackson Carr, don't worry about him. He's still an excellent and excellent. He's going to excel in Major League Baseball. I, 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 I bet he will. But here's the thing: if the Royals want to stay at 500 or even be above 500, they're going to have to rely on Salvador Perez to be one healthy and two, try to play as many games as he can behind the plate. I think that Salvador Perez is the the main and key piece for the Kansas City Royals in order for that pitching staff to be exceptionally well. Granted, last night, uh, Jackson Kowar was shaking Salvi off, and it's like, don't shake Salvi off. No, if, especially for that, uh, that veteran to rookie um, experience, don't shake your veteran off. I, but when Salvi doesn't play, I just don't, I just don't feel confident with Cam Gallagher having the same exact pull of what Salvador Perez does. Granted, 
Cam Gallagher is a great catcher. He's a he start he's more of a slap hitting catcher when he's even on his bat, but he's still a very good catcher. But your main guy is Salvador Perez, and you want Salvador Perez to be behind the plate as many times as you want. His knees have failed. He had Tommy John surgery. This this there's a lot of injury bugs that concern. Which I mean is is good that they're DHing him more. But I think they just need that catcher, that backup catcher to be, I mean, a little bit better than Cam Gallagher, another one. So, like, say he's not in the Major League Baseball anymore, but say, like, a guy like Jonathan Lucroy. Jonathan Lucroy, once his uh, his time at being the full-time catcher in Duplantis, he picked up everything, got signed to Oakland, was their second to third catcher on the team, and he excelled well because he was a veteran and he was able to be the game manager if he wanted to as the backup catcher. Do I think Cam Gallagher is getting is being the actual game manager down there telling the pitchers what they should throw or not? I don't think so. I think he's still getting all this stuff from Athene. But with with Salvador Perez, he's a guy that you can rely on. This guy's a, a former World Series MVP. Or no, yeah, he was a postseason MVP at some point. So at Major League Baseball, I don't know. This Salvi just needs to play no matter what, and it's it's gonna be hard. It's hard to say that in the grind of 162. Granted, some players play this game to try to do 162 plus the postseason plus the World Series and win the World Series. That's what that's everybody's goal. You gotta play, and I think Salvi is the guy that they need. And it's just, I would like to see him behind the plate no matter what because he's a he's, he's a wall. He's huge. He's he's capable to do anything back there, and plus his bat this year has done so well. So it, it would even hurt if he was even out of the lineup. So that's I mean that's good. At least they put him at DH or put him at first base. I mean Carlos Santana's there, but I don't know if the, if the Royals want to stay above 500 or granted be at 500. You got to have Salvi pit, play every single day, or it's not going to work. It, it just it just won't. And I, I'm hope I've been pro- be proven wrong. But at this point right now, if the Royals were to either trade for or if there's a free agent catcher out there that has the capability of the the, the style as, say, Salvador Perez. Like, even look at uh, when they signed Eric Kratz, a veteran in the league. He can pretty much slap hit, but he's a guy that people looked up to. I'm not saying that nobody's looking up to Cam Gallagher. or I'm not, not putting Cam Gallagher down. I, I, I still think he's a good quality backup catcher. But you need a, a better backup than Cam Gallagher. That's what I'm just trying to say here. So, Sally, you have to play if you want to help out, A, the team, scoring runs, B, help out the pitchers because those rookies are going to rely on you, especially Brady Singer, Chris Bubich, Daniel Lynch, when he gets called back up again because he will get called back up again, or even this new the new rookie Jackson Coar. You have to – Respect and learn from Salvi because he knows he knows what he's doing. He's an all-star veteran catcher in the league, and you cannot count out Salvi no matter what. He's a very good defensive catcher as well, even for his size. If a ball gets past him, he's going to get that ball and fire it to second base and hopefully get that per, that runner out, which we almost saw during the during the Angels and Royals game just the other night when Jackson Coar was starting. So Salvi is an impressive peace for this Royals and the heart and soul for the Royals that he just needs to be out there no matter what I, that's just I, he just needs to be out there and I hope he catches as many games as he can I really do so Major League Baseball back in the 90s early 2000s that's early 2000s like when they started cracking down on the use for batters using steroids but now there's a new steroid in Major League Baseball, but it's not something that players can take or inject in themselves, and that is putting stuff on the baseball. Some sticky stuff for that pitchers are using to get their spin rate more has made the game even more hard for pitcher, well, for batters to hit balls from the pitchers. There's the the number of strikeouts have gone up. It just has. This is this is this could be the first season ever in Major League Baseball history where the strikeout percentage is higher, way higher than the major league batting average, the average of the batting average. Like it's it's it, that it's it's never happened before that the strikeout percentage is that high on the strikeout rate and it's because of pitchers using material, sticky material or stuff that they can just use to get an upper hand, get more spin, get more break, get more control on the ball to strike out said batters. It's happening in the game of Major League Baseball. The funny thing is, 
when MLB said, hey, we're going to crack down, we're going to suspend players 10 games if they were caught using some type of foreign substance. Once that was that was put out in the afternoon, that night Garrett Cole for the Yankees, who is the, one of the most dominant pitchers in, in the game right now, just did terrible. He almost, I think it was over 900 runs that he had in the first two innings. Like it, he wasn't, I'm guessing he wasn't using stuff or he just got shelled or it's just that type of night. It just, nothing was working for him. So is that a, a common type of similarity of a cause and effect of, okay, I'm not going to use this, but here's the effect and the outcome. Or is it just a coincidence? I don't know. You'd let me know on that one. But there's pitchers using this. It's, without a doubt, the worst hitting season in Major League Baseball. And even guys like Charlie Blackman, who said on uh, on Sports Illustrated when they Sports Illustrated covered this, he said, I'm tired of hearing people say that players only want to hit home runs. That's not why people are striking out. They're striking out because guys are throwing 97-mile-an-hour super sinkers or balls that just go straight up with all the sticky stuff in the new baseball spin rate. That's why guys are still striking out because it's really hard to to not strike out and this is charlie blackman who's won a batting title like he's a, a hitter the, the pitchers are getting to these guys they're getting to them there's there's still this, some players who are still like adapting to it but pitchers are doctoring the balls in order to help them out and i got evan longoria he says he says it's called spider tech it's a clear sticky substance are these using? Where can you put this stuff? Because I'm assuming it's not like belts behind the ear, behind the, in the hair. I mean, Michael Pineda had it on his neck, um, glove up underneath. Uh, you Darvish always touches his the the glove on the his pinky side of the glove. Heck, you could put pine tar in your glove and try to like smooth it out to where it actually looks. I mean, like it's it, it's a part of the glove, and like. Boom, put your glove in there and you can start digging around. Or if it's up underneath like a thing. Uh, the, the people do get creative with how they want to try to use stuff in order to get an upper hand, especially if you're a pitcher. And we've, I mean, you, we've all seen Major League Baseball. If, uh, the Major League, the movie. Uh, it's a, like all the stuff they use, coconut, oil, Pam, uh, deodorant. Uh, hair gel. What else can they use? Uh, pine tar, of course. Um, Vaseline. They can use anything like that. Heck, you can even cheese grater the ball. And from when I say cheese grater, they're not having actually an actual cheese grater out there. I'm saying like when they throw the ball around the horn, uh, players hit the ball onto the uh, into like a part that might be a little bit rough to like you know get a little bit of a um, a, a little bit of I'm trying to think of the word here uh, a scratch on the ball to where like of course when you throw, like say if you're throwing a wiffle ball. You got to see the holes there and make the ball go crazy. I mean, if there's a scratch on and your pitcher is a sinker ball pitcher, you're going to throw that ball and hopefully he knows where that scratch is and that ball's going to spin more towards the ground and dip more down. Players get creative and the pitchers at times correlate with the, uh, the infield saying, hey, do this, throw it around, throw it around, keep that ball in here. Because players the other day were, they had a baseball that rolled into a, a National League uh, dugout and they're playing with the ball and the ball sticking to their palm. They're like lifting their hand up. The ball's just like sticking up and coming down because of stuff that the pitchers somehow that we didn't see put stuff on the ball. It's happening. It, it's it's happening. And heck, even Trevor Bauer back in 2019 for Sports Illustrated even said that if he even used this stuff to help his with his spin rate on, his, on the pitches, it would just go skyrocket. Like he will strike out even more people, help him out 110%. So it's p- pitchers are using it and they're cracking down on it and we're going to start seeing suspensions. Four minor league baseball players have been su- suspended because of said used substances and I think two of them are in the White Sox. One of them was in I think my, the Marlins organization. It's everywhere. People are using it. If it's starting to go back into minor league baseball, that's just going to skyrocket and people are just going to keep bringing it up with it. And then Major League Baseball is going to bring it back down because say if say someone gets hurt, say if Jacob DeGrom, Uses stuff. I'm not saying he does, but say Jacob Degrom go had to go with his uh, rehab as, um, as stint back in low A. Say if he like helped out the pitchers, the pitchers were talking to him, the young pitchers saying, "Hey, how you do this? How you do that?" And he says, "Oh, I use this stuff that helps me with the, with the pitchers." I'm not saying he does, but that's a that's a thing. Major League Baseball players when they go on rehab assignments could actually help. I guess players cheat because I mean, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. When in the terms of baseball, so I. Pitchers are cheating. 
why don't you just give the batter steroids and then have everything just all just go mash? It's like Super Mega Baseball if you ever played that game. Have everything just like that. I'm not saying do that. I'm not condoning the use of steroids at all. But I'm not condoning the use of doctoring a baseball to help give even an advantage. Using steroids helped players get back into better shape and to and help them the injury that they've had go away sooner. Like they can recover quicker, bigger, faster, stronger. That's what they call it. And that's the only reason why that the players use the steroids and it kind of helped them gain a lot more muscle, get a lot more power, and boom, home runs were hit. That didn't, that didn't, that didn't change the hand-eye coordination. The thing with this, the thing with this, the, the sticky stuff, as, I, as I'm saying, you're actually putting something on a ball to help you gain an advantage. If you took steroids, you still have to use your hand-eye coordination to in order to hit a ball. So if you were going to go up against a guy who has steroids, a guy who has the, the ball stuff, who do you think is going to win? I'll tell you one thing, it won't be the batter because the batter still has to use his hand-eye coordination and the pitcher can use whatever he can to help that spin rate because, heck, do you think Barry Bonds is going to try to hit a 97-mile-an-hour sinker? I mean, granted, he probably will about 50% of the time, but the pitcher still have an advantage on this no matter what. And people were talking about, oh, yeah, move the mound back, move it back, lower it. No. Just have the pitchers use the ball clean or use the stuff that the that Major League Baseball tell the umpires to rub on, like this this type of dirt or mud that they put on the ball in order for it to, to just be have it not as slick. Just use that. They have rosin back there. The rosin is legal to use. Use that. Don't use the sticky stuff. I mean, people are always trying to get the, up the upper hand or advantage on something. But I'm telling you, if you have a guy using a pitch with this sticky stuff, say if it's Trevor Bauer versus a guy who took steroids, like what's to say Sammy Sosa, I'm pretty sure Trevor Bauer is going to strike out Sammy Sosa about 70% of the time. I absolutely, I, I believe that with without a doubt. I do. Sticky tack, spider tack. Sticky tack might work too. Pitchers are cheating. They, they truly are. And we're starting, we're seeing this and it's cracking out. And I feel like this might be, I mean, it's not going to be like a big steroid scandal. I bet we're going to find out names of players who are using it or players are going to come out and say, hey, this player used it. Like, say if it's Mike Fryer is going to, not, I wouldn't say tattle again, but say, oh, yeah, all the all the Astros players do it. Oh, yeah, Garrett Cole definitely does it. Oh, Justin Verlander definitely does it. If Justin Verlander at the age of 39 or something like that uses this stuff or has he been using this stuff or has he been telling people to use this stuff, you don't know because it's a part of the unwritten rules of baseball where you really don't talk about it. It's true. It all it all goes back. It's funny now how all of it always goes back to the unwritten rules of Major League Baseball. Granted, this is a weird 2021 season, and it's just going to get even more funkier. It will. It'll just get funky as it can be. So if you ever heard the name Bill James, that's the guy who is about behind the, all the money ball stuff that helped the Oakland Athletics. Now he's trying to propose a new deal. He was on MLB Now. And he says, whatever equipment the batter is wearing, he needs to wear it around the bases. That, no, okay, how about I, I, This doesn't do I, I mean, saying it doesn't do it justice. Let's, listen to this. It's, it has to do with protective equipment. And I'm not in any way in favor of, of batters being injured or risking their health in any way. But uh, the uh, baseball was played for 100 years with – uh, without batting helmets. We have now not only batting helmets, but better batting helmets than we had. We have elbow guards and chin guards, and batters have an array of protective equipment now that they didn't have uh, a, a, even a generation ago. Better, better batting helmets. The, um, the protective equipment makes them bold enough to lean into a pitch in a way that just was not done and could not be done 30 years ago because it's too dangerous. Right. I, I love that the last part then. I'll get to the last part. Uh, this they could do right away. Whatever equipment the batter is wearing. And that's, that's, that's BK um, uh, on OB now. So Michael Conforto, uh, he earlier, I think it was the second week of Major League Baseball, extended his elbow out and he got hit on the elbow pad. And the uh, Mets walked it off off of a hit by pitch. So, I mean, granted, that's something that could have sparked the thing. But why would a batter, 
he's wearing that protective equipment only because he doesn't want to get hit by the ball and hurt himself uh, because these pitchers, one, are, are using the sticky the spider tack and they do not want to get hit in the elbow, possibly break a bone. They have the people, like I when I played baseball, I had that shin guard on because I'd always foul the ball off my foot or right in the ankle area, so I didn't want that to happen. So why would these players have to, you know, wear the stuff around the bases? Completely stupid. It's not like it's going to speed up the game at all. It just these batters take it off or hand it to their their, their first base umpire, uh, umpire, excuse me, their first base coach, and he holds on to it until the end of the inning. So it's not like it's – or the bat boy grabs it. It's not like it's hurting anything. If anything, you should get rid of those glove things that people that players wear because it extends your, I guess it extends it out a little bit more. But granted, that's for protection of when you slide your hand into the bag, you don't want to jam it, break a finger, because I mean we saw what Marcelo Zuna for the Braves when he, uh, when he got hurt, uh, his finger got jammed back because he slid his hand right into the bag. No, no, he slid his hand right into Rafael Devers' cleat, but it was going to go right into the bag anyways. So, granted it. This is stupid. This is dumb. Players should not have to wear their stuff, their equipment around the bases. Granted, when they hit the ball, they run around the bases. They still have it on. It's not like when they hit it, they have to take it off real quick and run around. So I can see from that aspect is like, okay, that actually makes kind of sense. But it's uncomfortable for the better batter and also player uh, even had to wear that stuff around the bases and are just like, to, even in general, as you're sitting there, it's, it's you know, that, that elbow pad's uncomfortable because, I mean, you extend your arms, but it's not like you want to hold your arm out that entire time because it's going to feel weird on your arm, especially with that big, uh, gigantic elbow guard that they've been using now. And also, it'll, take, it'll give these, uh, these Evo Shield would be out of business or even other makers that make these types of protection. This is not the move for Major League Baseball to enforce. Uh, Bill James, you might have be the mastermind behind Moneyball, but this is incredibly stupid. There's, there's no reason for this to happen. And if Major League Baseball does not force this, which I wouldn't be shocked if Rod Manfred was like, yeah, we'll give it a go. It's something, something different for the game. But it's also something different that players are going to be like, hey, 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 we wear this for protection against the pitcher. Why are we protecting ourselves when we're already out on the base path, whether if it's like a full count the next batter's up and I'm still sitting here with all the protective gear that I wore because guys wear the, the, the glove, the elbow pad, the... Uh, the, the shin guard, heck, some, I don't know if some guy ever wears a knee pad out there, which, I mean, honestly, if you got a pitcher going to throw at your knee, your front knee, honestly, I wouldn't be mad if it had something underneath my pants that's, like, up against the, that's there so it can help an extra protection pad. But, no, no, no this Bill James, you're, you're outlandish and you're foolish for this. You are, you are. Um, let's, uh, let's get to the top players to watch this coming upcoming trade deadline. One person that I didn't make my list, but just came to my mind because they're, the team is absolutely terrible, and he is the one of the the best pure hitters in the National League. I compare him to the Whit Merrifield of the American League. And that's Adam Frazier for the Pittsburgh Pirates. This guy can play everywhere on the infield and everywhere on the outfield. There is no reason for a team to try to make a move if they're trying to get a push and get some extra help to get into that postseason near the trade deadline. Adam Frazier is a key, a clear-cut favorite of, to be acquired by some team. If it's some team, I, I bet it's going to. They do not probably want to trade inside the division, but St. Louis Cardinals could use something like this. The Chicago Cubs could use someone like this. Heck, the Milwaukee Brewers could use someone like this. The Milwaukee Brewers just made a, made a deal not too long ago for Willie Adamas. And, like, I mean, it's not, like, it's not like it's a bad thing to pick up another guy. So if it's not inside division, he's going to go to a coast. I think the, his caliber has a clear cut favorite of what Oakland Athletics organization likes and a player he gets on base he plays every single position boom try to go get him so adam frazier is a guy to be on the thing joey gallo all as well i think the texas rangers they should at least try to move joey gallo to get as many prospects as possible because garcia is a guy for the future if you want to say joey gallo is it's just a thing that this is not a very good baseball team it's a very young baseball team it's a it's a team that's trying to grow and get better of course but it's not a team that we saw from the early um, early 2010s. It's it's a complete different team from this, from that 2010, that 2011 Texas Rangers team. Because, heck, that was Michael Young, Josh Hamilton, Nelson Cruz. That That's a completely different team than what we see today. So if you're Joey Gallo, I think the the Joey Gallo is going to get moved. Rangers going nowhere, and you can seriously get a massive hole, especially for – I say a team like the New York Yankees who have a, a very touted and, and young 
very good prospects in their triple a a pitcher and a batter jason dominguez for joey gallo a possible pitcher to help out the the hurting always hurt new york yankees plus the bronx bombers anyway so joey gallo fits just that mold plus that 315 short porch in right field he's gonna easily if he went to new york and played in new york he would have 50 home runs 50 to 60 home runs a season because of how he pulls the ball well granted i mean he i don't know if he's gonna have that many home runs because of how the pitchers are doctoring the baseball but Joey Gallo could either go to Yankees, I would say the Boston Red Sox, it wouldn't hurt a team. They're trying to season on capitalizing on like a season that they're like, oh, I didn't even realize that we were going to be this good because Boston Red Sox are a game behind the Tampa Bay Rays in the in the division over at the AL East at this time. So Boston Red Sox could make a move. I also think another team is the Chicago White Sox could possibly try to make a deal for Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo could play right field. He could play first base. But the thing is, the White Sox have been hurt on the injury bug with the, well, just injury bug in general. Their outfield, their starting outfield is supposed to be Eloy Jimenez out in left, Luis Robert out in center, and those two guys are hurt. Those two guys are done for the season pretty much. So Joey Gallo could help out the Chicago White Sox tenfold, and that's something that in division for the Kansas City Royals, you do not want happening, but it's the thing. Joey Gallo can make a big, huge impact from moving from Texas up to Chicago or any team he goes to. I, I think those are the three top teams that he could possibly land there. Another person that could be traded is Max Scherzer from the Washington Nationals. Nationals right now are last in the division, but only three games out. So, I mean, it's it's still a tight race in uh, for the Washington Nationals, but I believe the window for the Nationals have closed, and it's time to liquidate assets, and that's Stream Strasburg can't be healthy. You can't trust him on that, so why not try to trade Max Scherzer to get a, a deal that package some type of pitching or some type of offense that can help the Nationals get back into that window of opportunity to win the World Series, but you got to do it with this 36-year-old pitcher who still has some amount of innings left. He's, I mean, he's logged over 2,500 innings in his entire career. But destinations that could possibly land him the in, in his capability, St. Louis Cardinals, they're trying to, of course, make it back to the postseason and, again, and they need the pitching. Jack Flaherty's hurt. Carlos Martinez, you cannot trust. Miles Michaelis, once again, hurt. Kwon Young Kim hurt. So Cardinals could make a move to try to get a pitcher, even if it's just not Max Scherzer. Scherzer could be a, a good a good fit for St. Louis. Los Angeles Dodgers could clearly use another pitcher. Dustin May is done for the season. He's been done for a while now. So Dodgers could use another pitcher. Granted, another Cy Young pitcher on that team would be ridiculous. and it, I mean, that, it shows you where money goes. But Dodgers could use a team could use them Chicago Chicago Cubs have been surprisingly hot and they're actually in first place in the National League Central could they use some more help in their starting rotation why not go for Max Scherzer Tampa Bay Rays they're a team that likes to buy and also do some weird funky stuff but if they can see I mean if they saw what Rich Hill's done and Rich Hill's been one of the most dominant pitchers in the American League this season at 40 some years old get a 36 year old Max Scherzer try to milk as much as you can out of him and if they know or if they can like sense that, okay, he still has a little bit left in the tank. Let's try to get all, let's get him to, I don't know, let's get him to 2,650 innings and he can help us get to the postseason and we don't have to use him at all in the postseason because we can just turn our analytically based way to you. But because Max Scherzer is the guy that can get you into the postseason. So Cardinals, Dodgers, Cubs, Rays, a perfect fit for, I say, Max Scherzer. Let's go to Miguel Cabrera. It's odd to say to, to hey, let's trade Miguel Cabrera for the Tigers because, I mean, his contract still stupendously huge. But we're not sure how many seasons Miguel Cabrera has left. And I don't know if they want to say that, okay, do what the Angels did to our Pujols, just cut bait with him. Just cut it off. Just rip the bandit off completely. They need to do that with Miguel Cabrera. And Miguel Cabrera could win a World Series once again and put that on his resume. Destinations to him, I feel like athletics could try to make a splash on a DH or the Boston Red Sox. But DH is the thing that I would have Miguel Cabrera be at. So, Miggy, DH somewhere else, and rather than Detroit, because he still has the, the at-bats and stuff. He still has his good hand-eye coordination. His power may not be there anymore. He may just be more of a, a push hitter, but that's okay. Let's go to Nelson Cruz. The Twins stink this year. They do. This uh, Nelson Cruz has the only good stick on that team that's been trying to help them. Their pitching's been terrible. Their bullpen's been terrible. This is a failed season. I wouldn't be shocked if more players in the I think the Twins are going to be the the most heavy trade team to get rid of assets like Jay Happ I, I wouldn't be surprised if Barrios gets moved 
Nelson Cruz is the clear-cut top guy to get moved. And the teams that could possibly use him, Yankees, of course, because they need as many bats as possible, especially for a home run hitting bats. They, they, they tend to love those. Or the Boston Red Sox, they could use another help off the bench. DH, I mean, clearly he's not DH. He's not coming off the bench. If Nelson Cruz is coming off the bench, you're using him wrong. Or the Houston Astros. Houston Astros, he can still play the outfield. You play out in right field, you can DH him. Do, do what you need to do. Nelson Cruz... Still has a lot left, and I, he, granted, I think he could probably play till he's like 45. He might be the oldest. I want to see him be the oldest batter. He he held the pass uh, Julio Franco on like the oldest player to hit a home run. I think Nelson Cruz can actually do that. I think he's still got. I mean, I'm not saying he has 10 more years left, but I wouldn't be shocked if he retires like in 2027 or 2028. But yeah, no, Nelson Cruz could be shipped. Adam Frazier, Miguel Cabrera, Max Scherzer. Joey Gallo, those are my top guys right now that could possibly be on the move to a different, uh, a different, our senior change or anything like that. So, if there's any other type of players you think could be moved, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, but let's, I'm gonna go to the questions. Got a couple questions sent in to me. Um, uh, if you have a question, a baseball question, send it, put it in the comment section down below. At me on Twitter, Kramer T Talks. Just ask it through me that way. Um, uh, make sure you follow me too, because all and when I about ready to record stuff, I'll say, "Hey, got any questions? Baseball questions? Let me know." But the first question is, when will you? When will the Royals call up Bobby Witt Jr.? I hope not anytime soon. I seriously don't. From that, the gap difference between Major League Baseball and also uh, AAA, and granted, Bobby Witt Jr. is in AA at Northwest Arkansas for the Naturals. Do not rush Bobby Witt Jr. Do not call him up this season. Do not do it. I don't. The Royals are 500 right now. Even if they're at that push, like maybe they get that hump over, do not call him up. We saw what Jordan Kelnick did for the Mariners after he got his service time stuff for the Mariners trying to course finagle the the uh, the uh, what's it called the service type of Major League Baseball. Uh, he's just went 0 for 39 and just got sent down. He's batting a 0.83. You don't want that Bobby Witt Jr. because then people are going to turn on Bobby Witt Jr. Kind of like I'm I'm hoping they don't turn on Daniel Lynch or Jackson Coar. Bobby Wood Jr., granted, I'd say this season he gets called to AAA. Next season starts in AAA, gets called up like after the 18th game, like how service time does work out and stuff. Or he may, I mean, Dayton Moore might actually make him put him on the opening day roster for next season. He should not play Major League Baseball this season. He should at least get moved up to AAA at some point because I mean he has eight, nine home runs right now in AAA. He's just hitting them out plentiful. But then again, everybody in AAA is hitting home runs and striking out because he's batting like a, a two fifty three. Started off the season terribly. I think he went like one for thirteen his first thirteen at bats. So do not call Bobby Witt, Bobby Witt Jr. up anytime. I know it's granted it's 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 fun for the story because of how he's the number four prospect in Major League Baseball. But let him simmer. Let him play a full season down in the minors. Because he, because he got drafted a, not last year but two years ago, it was only put on the alternate site for the sixty game sprint, and now he's actually playing his first full season in minor league baseball at Northwest Arkansas. Let him go from Double A AA to Triple A, and the next season call him up to the bigs or put him on the opening day roster at some point. So ETA next season at the latest for Bobby Witt Jr. If everything goes as planned. Uh, next question is, what are your thoughts on pitchers using substances on the balls? What is the purpose of some players covering their batting helmets and pine tar? That is actually very, very uh, a good question. So I clearly against the pitchers using foreign substances. Clearly against that. Um, and I, but I honestly don't see the difference. Well, I mean, batters put pine tar on their bat. We we know that it's for extra grip. It's you can only have it for so much on your bat too. But that's that's another grip thing. Batters also put a crap ton of pine tar on their helmets, and we we've seen that the, all the dirtiest helmets because once that thing falls on the ground and gets pick up the dirt, the dirt's on out, and the pine tar, it's all that sticky residue. It's it's just it's just it, 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 I think it looks cool, but it's just like it just it gets gets dirty. But there's a difference between using pine tar because you're because of the grip of the bat. Granted, some players use pine tar and not use batting gloves. Some players use batting gloves with pine tar. Some players just use batting gloves in general. That's just it. No pine tar needed. That's I think that's that all the pine tar uses is for the the batter to 
They use it for the batter to keep control of the bats where it doesn't slide out of his hands if there's like any type of water or the rain comes down, maybe some spit. Or it just goes right in between there. And like when you swing as hard as you a, a player can, because I mean the exit velocity on some of these balls are like a, averaging, I wouldn't say averaging, but some are 100 plus. I mean, if you look at Shohei Otani, the way he swings that violent swing, if he didn't have any like batting gloves on or pine tar, that bat would probably just fly away and go out to the stands and hit somebody. So the pine tar is, I think, is, is more acceptable than, of course, using the, the substances on the baseballs, clearly, because there's not really much of an advantage for a batter to use a pine tar bat. Like, seriously, it's, it's not like the bat's corked. Now, that'd be a different question. What if the ball is, has substance on it, or if the bat is corked? I mean, I would say, is that a level playing field? Is that, is that, a, is that, a, is that a decent trade-off? Or just use the the bigger bats, like the big wiffle ball bats, like the, the the very thick type of rounded barrel, or make the barrel bigger on bats as it's keeping its weight. That could be a fix. I don't know. I I'm I I'm for the pine tar, clearly against the substances. But that will do it here for this episode of throwing some shed as Kramer talks baseball. As I'm Kramer, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube video, the YouTube channel actually. Um, uh, rate the podcast I guess um, if you have any questions baseball questions please send them my way also thank you everyone who has subscribed to my YouTube channel over 1,000 subscribers so I appreciate that the grind is still going I enjoy making baseball content so more baseball content is going to come your way whether if it's via podcast like this with Throwing Shed or if it's just me putting those baseball videos up because I enjoy it I love talking about it um, yeah everybody have a good one